Hi, I'm Dr. Dan, and we're talking to osteoporosis. Now, some really good news. We'll jump right to the uh, the conclusion, and then I'll explain how I got there. But basically, gluten sensitivity and osteoporosis can be uh, can be connected. So, if you're uh, dealing with osteoporosis and you're looking for a better solution than uh, than Fosamax or Boniva, um, listen to the video, and I'll give you some tips. But basically, all this started uh, a few years ago in my clinic, and I had a couple of people that I was dealing with. One um, very active person, I think mid-30s, and uh, thin and blonde, uh, PE teacher, very, they say very active, um, but showing up with some significant bone loss. You know, and she kind of looked at me like, why is this happening? I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. And the other person was also uh, blonde, thin, tall, and uh, probably early 50s at that point, but her her bone uh, density had gone from very normal, very good, to uh, significant osteopenia in just a, just a few years. And that uh, progressed within another couple of years to osteo, uh, osteoporosis in her hip. So the question was why, when these women had, had um, done everything they're supposed to do, as far as you know, exercise, calcium, and all that sort of thing. So, you know, in, in a good diet, um, so what do you do? Um, you know, we went through the whole thing of, okay, if I can't give you a good alternative, I like to give people alternatives to, uh, to some of the destructive medical practices, if I can, and if I can't, then of course, then we have to go to that, that, um, that modality. So I recommend it to this one who's in her 50s, because once it turned out to a par uh, parotid, I said, well, you know, I think you need to do some uh, Fosamax knowing that it causes ulcers, uh, poor quality bone, can uh, kill you with uh, destruction of the jaw. And, you know, I knew all that, and so I explained it and said, but I don't have a good alternative. And about a year into this, I, uh, you know, she was having a lot of stomach issues, just didn't like this stuff at all. We ran across a, a really good article about um, the, some studies that were done in the Mayo Clinic in the 50s, with, with uh, something called strontium. They give these women about 800 uh, milligrams of strontium a day and you know in place of calcium and the body the, the body can actually uptake strontium like calcium and and produce a decent quality bone where calcium is not working. And in the study in the Mayo Clinic they were using women who already had osteoporosis so bad that it, they, they had compression fractures of the lumbar spine. And they had excellent results in all of them to a uh, complete resolution of any uh, pain that was associated with, uh, with these fractures. So I was excited and we thought, well let's give this a try. So, you know, she went on strontium for a year and a half, uh, maybe two years, and then did another DEXA and sure enough the osteoporosis had leveled out because it was declining rapidly, it had leveled out. So we were excited. So at least, uh, at least we got the problem um, under control for the moment. But further reading showed that strontium only works for, for maybe two years in that neighborhood. So it's a short-term solution. So we began, we continued to, um, to look around. Um, in the fall of 2009, or early fall, I uh, began to do a lot of research on gluten sensitivity. And you know, there are about 15,000, 20,000 articles been published on this in the last 15 years, and some of them had to do with osteoporosis, and with, with some excellent, you know, people reporting excellent results with just putting people on a gluten-free diet. So, we tested this one person, I lost track of that first one, but uh, we um, tested this other person who's in her 50s, and sure enough, she had uh, significant gluten sensitivity markers and antibodies in, in her genetic test, and so she went on a gluten-free diet January 1, 2010. And so this next DEXA was done, and the DEXA, of course, is the scan you do for bone density. The next DEXA was uh, February 15th, 2011, and she, had, she showed significant bone restoration within, uh, within just this 13-month period. So that's pretty exciting, considering that usually this is a one-way uh, one ticket. And so in her case, that going gluten-free and giving up all the bread and pasta is, is going to save her life. So the, uh, the scores, the actual scores I'll put in the description or maybe in a slide on the video when I get done so you'll see it there. 
but just so uh, you have it here, um, the z-score went from in 2005 to a mi from a minus 2.2, which is osteoporosis, to February 11 uh, to a minus 1.3. And she'd been off the for this last score, she'd been off of uh, strontium for probably nine months, so that can't that couldn't have been the effect. Uh, she was taking something called Austinol, and that's from a company called Zycal uh, Bioceuticals. And the folks at Zycal tell me that you can expect a change in your osteoporosis in about a year to 18 months. And so she's been on this since probably July. So maybe six months, seven months of Austinol. So we're really not expecting that to have made much of a difference. So it appears that the real shift here was a gluten-free diet, which is good news because you can save your own life here. You don't have to, you know, uh, risk these poor quality bone and these other problems that um, that Boniva and Fosamix might might produce. So I encourage you to to check into this and see if this applies to you. If it does, great news. If it doesn't, well, um, some of these other other options may be necessary for you. That's uh, that's my osteoporosis report. Uh, thanks a lot for listening. I hopefully hopefully that was helpful for you.